Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, I've recently ran into um, a particular scientist, a brain scientist, a Donald D. Hoffman, um, professor of cognitive sciences at uh, the University of California, Irvine. So it's very, very interesting, um, his uh, thoughts of the world, because basically, uh, here again, science is catching up with uh, the real science out there, manifesting sciences, uh, um, occult sciences, that have been stating what he's stating for thousands of years. And it's amazing how, you know, in the end, Gnosis pops its head regardless of, uh, pops its head up, regardless of whether you want to hear about it or not. So um, he's finally figured out um, subtle energy physics, which, of course, I've been talking about for over 30 years, and as I've said, goes back to the real sciences of how things are made up of uh, informational energetic fields of different types, and how the universal st uh, universe started with occultons, which interact with scions, uh, which is this uh, strange quantum physics understanding of the world. But, you know, uh, subtle energy physics really explains it all. Well, you get into scientists and you allow people like Einstein and even himself here, uh, Donald D. Hoffman, um, they tend to put these things into a very confused scientific model so they're taken seriously. And of course, that's what you have to do in the very oppressive uh, world of science, which is not seeking answers, it's seeking self-empowerment in terms of ego and money. And that's how the world runs. The point is, it really has nothing to do whether you want to find truth. It has to do, well, you've got to fit into the club. If you don't fit into the club, which is all set there to make money and propagate themselves, uh, then you're thrown out. That's as simple as that. They don't want to hear from anybody with any different opinions, which, of course, is what science is supposed to be all about. So, um, he's written a few books. He's got a new one out, which I will review here. I just purchased it last night off of Kindle. Um, and talks about, you know, the nature of reality and everything else. And, of course, uh, he's stating that, you know, there's something going on behind the physical structures. Now, a lot of people think things are physical when they're not. They're made up of all sorts of other things that make up the physical. And a lot of that physical tends to be, quote, empty space, which is kind of... Um, <clears throat> A strange thing to say, because empty space, if you jumped uh, out of onto empty space, you fall on the ground. So people misunderstand what that means. But if you take a sheet of steel and you put it under a strong enough microscope, it's going to look like a screen door. But the point is, is that it's still solid. It doesn't matter how much of that space is empty, it's solid to your physical reality. So it's kind of a misnomer when you talk like that. And this is what they like to do to confuse people. But he talks about this whole, what is the underlying effect of really physical matter and what controls it and what happens to it? Uh, well, it certainly isn't the physical matter itself because we keep breaking that down and it keeps going smaller and smaller and that screen door, uh, when you start um, enlarging it, does come to be almost empty spaces to uh, understand. It. So it certainly can't be the physical matter. So he's finally gotten it. And um, pretty much most of the people that he deals with, other physicists, uh, don't really buy it, even though they don't really have answers for anything. So when they're approached by a person like him, they have to give him some credence. But when it really comes down to it, they're not going to, because there, there isn't enough uh, pseudo-intellectual answers for them uh, to deal with. So, uh, because of that, uh, because uh, there isn't that, they reject anything that's different. But, of course, when you approach people properly, who I guess are professionals, um, they have to deal with some of the conclusions he's come up with. Now, he has some very interesting um, uh, talks, and apparently, since he is a noted person in the scientific community, and apparently he's out there, he talks on TED and everything else, um, and how we interpret things through our eyes, and all these other things of, uh, which are just kind of illusions, which is so true. Um, 
he's gotten a lot of airplay for his uh, philosophical uh, scientific understandings of what's uh, going on and um, how our eyes trick us, how our brain trick us, etc. Of course, this is what the um, goofball magicians do, stage magicians, who tend to come out and state that um, and trick us and then say, well, everything is a trick and that's the problem. So, well, I mean, that's how life is. And the point is, is yes, we do formulate ideas. And yes, it is in a minor spectrum. Um, I think he makes a point here of how we only see certain colors, while certain animals apparently are able to see uh, double the variations that we have. Well, isn't that fascinating? <coughs> Excuse me. So, that... Um, they can see dimensions more, probably because they need to uh, to survive. That's how it works. And apparently, certain females uh, have the ability to have one more light spectrum. I forget what the exact terminology are, but the average person has four. They have five light spectrums, where they can discern colors. So they see things very differently. And only females, apparently, have this strange uh, variation, some of them. So the whole idea is that um, here they're seeing the world in a completely different way. And of course, this is true with everybody. You know, I extrapolate onto this to state that everybody's seeing the world differently. Your personal programming, um, where you're coming from, your belief systems, uh, all affect your, uh, the information that you see and take in. Um, so the whole idea, if you're not accustomed to seeing variants or different energy type fields, you're not going to be able to see, sense them, etc. You have to learn all this. Um, the uh, abilities to certain things are there, especially um, when you get into subtle energy physics. But the bottom line is, is that you can develop most of these. For you to see 10,000 colors more, is that needed? I don't think so. Does it show a weakness in the human capacity? The same thing with our hearing. We only hear a very small amount of what's going on out there. We only see a small amount of what's going on. It has nothing to do with colors. We just only see a certain uh, spectrum, just like we only hear. Well, this just reaffirms subtle energy physics, meaning the fact that um, you're deliberately limited because you don't need any more information uh, in life, and it becomes actually an abandonment. It's too much information causing information overload. And it's amazing how none of this is talked about in regular scientists, and, uh, but information overload is a critical problem. How do you give it? Well, you do that. Uh, it just shows how your higher self, your consciousness, is going to naturally seek empowerments and information from other sources because of the great limited capacity that you're hearing, seeing, taste, etc. Everything is super limited in a human being. And uh, just as simple as that. And in most other species, they maybe have higher abilities, uh, showing, of course, their superiority. But the bottom line is, is that you are super limited, which means your consciousness kicks in all the time to seek out energetic informational fields to give you that extra information that you need and far beyond the uh, what we call the physical meaning what your very limited senses can see feel etc so they're going to seek out all those things that are called quote psychic uh, all those um, abilities to uh, since you can't see very far and, uh, dr hoffman points out that basically you don't see anything past uh, your arm uh, so you can reach your arm straight out and hold your thumb out. That's about as far as you can perceive c clearly. So does that mean that the mind turns off? No. It means the mind develops abilities to remote view, see at a great distance. Um, so if you can see four feet away, five feet away, why not 10 million miles away? Well, is there any difference? Well, not really. And uh, when it comes down to it, uh, this is how your higher level senses work. So, and this kicks in and you have to, of course, consciously kick in practices and do exercises and use tools to develop these abilities. And it's as simple as that, but they're there all the time because if you had very sensitive eyesight, hearing, etc., would you have the ability to develop any of these things? Of course not. 
there's a practical necessity here and the practical necessity is is that you are so limited and this to a very small spectrum of information because that's all you can handle in the day-to-day -day world if you could see everything magnified by a thousand percent that wouldn't make your life better if you could hear a fly landing on a car from a thousand feet away would that help your life no should you be able to maybe tap into that in some way? Yes. Because when you get to higher levels of functioning, higher levels of survival, having these kind of very advanced abilities is extremely important. And this is what everybody misses. So here we go again, of course. Thanks, Dr. Hoffman. You have yet again proven uh, subtle energy physics. You don't even know it. And of course, uh, you're stuck in a reality that will probably never benefit from what you have to say. It's amazing that you're allowed to say it and you have a certain uh, board uh, or that you work with at your school that allows you to go into this area as experimental psychology. Um, how far that goes, where it's going to go, uh, who knows. His books and talks certainly sum up any manifesting scientists of belief systems in terms of what's really happening that all you're seeing is a fake physical reality and uh, he goes into examples of computers and everything else and of course what we've done with computers is made an interface so we can easily um, understand what's going on and use them uh, but when you press a button on a computer or a key on your uh, computer keyboard um, you're Activating a huge process of things that are happening. Things are gonna, it is going into the computer, into circuits. These circuits are breaking things down, etc. It's quite a complicated process. It's not just the key, but the key that you press on your keyboard um, is how you translate that in modern life. Now, if you accept that, that's it. That if you press the B key on your computer keyboard, that B goes into the computer, and that's as simple as that. Well. To a certain extent, I'm afraid this is where the doctor is wrong. It is that, because it does happen and manifest that way. But there's a process to do it. To think that that's the only process there that's going on. And what is making all this physical reality? Where does it come from? Well, it comes from occultons, doctor. And this is what everything. And it interacts with your scions. Because he believes in quantum physics that nothing really happens unless we uh, are part of it and I tend to believe that on one level as well I don't think uh, that things don't uh, that happen that um, th that something isn't there unless we perceive it but ultimately that's all that matters because if we don't perceive it and it isn't real in our life well it really isn't real it's in a book we got a picture of it yet yeah, it which it's real to us now because we've seen an image but is it real well it's real to some people and that's just the same way that can be looking at looked at uh, people who have quote advanced uh, subtle energy physics abilities so people who have psychic abilities who can uh, manifest well who can see spirits and talk to them who can communicate psychically with telekinesis and over differences distances well all of this are people that are able to demonstrate these physical abilities now science wants to discount these things and say that they don't work well here is proof of these extended abilities that some people have and uh, some people have them for many different reasons um, it's just a physical oddity to a certain extent but they're all in us that we can develop just like everybody can build great muscles you just have to go and do it and work on it now maybe some people can build bigger muscles than others because of their genetic structure but that isn't necessarily um, the fact that nobody only uh, nobody can build muscles it means that everybody can build muscles some can build them a little better and of course that's how life is made uh, everybody does something a little better than others some people have better skills that's just the reality of life but generally everybody can do everything you can play golf um, at a excellent level by uh, being taught properly and doing it can you play at a professional level well probably not but um, if you spend enough time and energy, you certainly could rival some of these people. That's how life is, and that's how all these other abilities are. 
Uh, but because science um, and uh, the people that they tend to align themselves with, the idiot skeptics and dumb bunkers, uh, who represent the most ignorant level of pseudoscience that you could ever possibly think of, uh, giving these kind of people credit is uh, what's destroying society and not allowing us to grow. In a scientific environment, everything should be accepted as a possibility, and you work on it. Now, even if you fail to do something um, personally, um, is this an objective you should have? And the objective you should be have, uh, ultimately, until we start working on the human being, until we start making better people and finding out what's going on in life so that we can develop to higher levels, uh, which benefit everyone, we are a doomed race. And that's where we're at. We live in a fantasy world, not in the world seeking truth. And until we start seeking truth, we're never going to get anywhere. The other area is that we can talk about all this want, and Dr. Hoffman can talk about his theories all he wants. They are, first of all, theories that his science can't prove. Secondly, it's based in an environment of very negative corruption, which is the problem with the entire world. Science is corrupted. It's all about money. It's all about, I'm going to call this Joe Schmidt's technique. You know, the scientists are the most egotistical maniacs you're ever going to run into. Everything is named after them. Or they make up words because there are particles that are called stick-ons. Did you get that, people? That's a great scientific discovery. I don't know. Did Mr. Stick do that? No, it sticks on. It's a particle that sticks on to another particle. So they've literally described it. They haven't named anything. They've given it a description. I mean, that's how infantile uh, science can get. But it's all based in corruption of the fact of is where are you going to get your money from? Now, certain people, um, similar to Dr. Bankston, uh, who's able to work within his college area, his university, where they support him so he can do research. And uh, the same thing must be happening with Hoffman, who's able to work within the University of Irvine, and they support him as an uh, experimental psychology brain studies. So they support his theories, and he's very articulate uh, about them, as is Dr. Bangston. Um, but the point is, is that these kind of people are generally shunned and laughed at. Uh, and uh, while surprisingly, uh, there is a fair amount of people that seem to be talking with and having um, them, uh, having Hoffman on in particular, um, it's a very small part of actual belief system in the physics community. And uh, because of corruption, which says, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, um, uh, because it doesn't fit into science. They're not looking for truth, but it's based in corruption. So the point is they're, they're worried about their jobs, their tenures, and everything else. So this is what happens in society, and everything becomes a corrupt sewer where absolutely nothing is ever gained. Until next time.